what is going on everybody this is your host rob back with another episode of from my experience podcast i'm rolling solo on this one but i have an interview i have a very very special guest now i I gave her a little bit of warning before i started recording that (laughs) i can see her video y'all can't see it i gave her a little bit of a warning but She's a traveler, she's a blogger, she's a foodie, she's in fashion, she's in a little bit of design, she's such an entrepreneur. And (laughs) I want to say this about her. You gave me a new regret in my life, and it's very rare that I have regrets, but after reading your blog, I was like, that is somebody I wish I was friends with when we went to school together. That is somebody I wish I would have gotten to know, because who knows where our friendship would be today. Because... By reading that blog, I was like, wow, this is an amazing person. So it's never too late to be friends, though. But anyway, ladies and gentlemen, Thank you. Thank I you. have the wonderful, the beautiful, the talented, the one and only Jessica. Are you ain't going to say nothing to people? Oh, hello, everyone. <laughs> Hi, how are you? Um, excited to be here and uh, really excited about this opportunity. I've never done anything like this before, so I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> well, you should be looking forward to it. I take care of everyone that's on the show. Good deal. So, Good deal. So let's start with this. Um, oh, I want to start out with this. Tell people where they can where they can find your blog before we get started talking about it. Okay, so my blog's name is Exposure, uh, and that's spelled uh, E X P O Z H E R. So it's a play on the word expose uh, exposure, but I I spelled it kind of expose her, and that's at dot me as in M E. So a little bit uh, different domain but um exposure.me is my blog site okay um on a serious note men women ladies especially if you're a young lady listening you need to go to her blog and you need to read it um we've been talking back and forth and she was like okay i'm ready and she's scheduled and i was working on sunday and i sat down and i went to her website and i read everything top to bottom everything looked at every single picture everything so it really gave a good look into who you are now and it it actually brought me uh it brought about some questions that i'm gonna have for you because i'm like okay this who she is now and i want to know more about that too i wonder who she was before so not much has changed i mean some things have changed but i think i'm pretty much still like the same person in a lot of ways um still quirky still like just free spirited uh but now i have a little bit more responsibility so that part i think has been pretty consistent okay so one of the things that i read in your intro to you basically you talk about being the woman you choose to be what does that mean and what led to that transformation for you um a lot led to the transformation. Uh, my experience at Claflin, um, just being around um, such a diverse group of people to uh, moving to Texas at a like critical point where I did a major career change, um, my faith. There's just been so many different pivotal points, I guess key points that um, has kind of ignited and be kind of like a catalyst, I guess, for change mm-hmm. within my life. Um, I, I tra- traveling has changed me. I, those pieces, I, it's changed my perspective. I wouldn't say it's changed um, just like who I am as a person because I've always kind of gravitated towards like, I've, I'm a natural explorer and I kind of put that on my page. That was something where that, that's where that came from okay. because I've always wanted to like just seek out information like, I've never been the kid to just be in one group, mm-hmm. um, one click. So I kind of gravitated to a lot of different groups. Um, I was with the nerds, with the jobs, a cheerleader. Like, so I've just always done a lot of different things. 
And I, I think traveling probably just showed me like, man, there's a lot of different ways to do certain, a lot of different things. Um, and things, the way that I see it is not always the way mm-hmm. or there's, there's other alternative ways. So, um, that's something I think that probably has caused a lot of intentional focus on, on myself. So, okay. Um, I can relate to that. I'm kind of the same way. I kind of could hang with any and everybody, even from high school to college. Like I got, <laughs> I was friends with everybody from the 4.0s to the 1.0. I ain't going to be here next semester people. Right. Um, so I definitely feel you on that. Um, another thing you talked about that I found interesting, and this is something that I think a lot of people can relate to. You talk about how you kind of struggle with your identity and how people saw you. So when did you recognize that this was an issue for you? And what, what was it that bothered you in regards to that? I think I've always kind of been, uh, that's a good question. That's a really good question. (laughs) Um. (laughs) I read that blog now. You did read the blog. You did your research and you, you did it. I'm, I'm impressed. Um, I think that came from being probably a preacher's kid. Like, um, that, that has always kind of defined my life, mm-hmm. defined my role. Like it set up a lot of structure in my life. Um, and when I say that, I think it's a funny because in my opinion, I think that a lot of people assume it, it that that came from my parents or that my parents kind of would have confined me because my father was a preacher but the reality was I really got it from my community and the assumptions of it was like false perspectives and so what what people would put me in a box of being a preacher's kid and limiting me to whatever they that idea for them was um I feel like it was kind of just displaced on me so I think that's where it started. Mm-hmm. Did I answer your question? Please? Yeah, you answered it. Okay. okay. Yeah. All right. So exposure, how did you come up with that name? And what are you trying to expose? If anything, you're trying to expose. I am. Exposure is actually like a mission of mine. It's a, it's a complex thing. And I don't know if I completely, uh, identify where I'm going with it, mm-hmm. not as far as um, what I want to do with it, but like my vision for it. Like, like ultimately the name came about of just so much perspective is everything. Perspective is how, like the reason why some people um, are in certain situations where they feel like they can get out and then other people are in situations with they they don't mind. I mean, they jump out every day. They right. they jump a physical plane, or they relocate to a different country. They, you know, I don't know. There's so many different ways that you can just jump and just do things, and it, it, it's the difference between living in a box and living outside the box. And so for me, um, I wanted to expose myself. Like I wanted this to be a genuine work, a work that was vulnerable a work that was, um, allows me to put like my truest thoughts, like things that I don't know if people know that, how I feel about them, mm-hmm. um, that could be assumed. And then the like dual side of that or twofold side is like for other, other people, like I am from the country. So like I have a hashtag is hashtag country and culture. And <laughs> that's like a real thing. Like, I think that that's a real identity and that's usually where I stay. I kind of swing in between both of those. Um, and I think growing up in the country, you lack so much exposure. Yes. And you don't know it until you get out and you're like the blinkers come off and you're exposed, whether that be through travel, whether that be through going to a college and all of a sudden, like all the people look like you or they don't look like you, whatever mm-hmm. your whatever that exposure looks like for you. It is just like taking off blinders, and I wanted, I wanted my blog to be a, a, a place of inspiration, a place where people that look like me, or, or grew up like me, or you know, like want the things that I want. Like I wanted them to see like the full story and not just the now. 
Um, I don't like, I would say it's based on travels. Um, sometimes like I like fashion, but I'm not like a fashion blogger. Mm -hmm. Like that's not my thing. So it's not about like just outward. Um, it's like seeing the whole, the whole package, like from beginning to end, like in, and so that part is really, um, how I came up with the name, what it means. So it's, it's personal. And then it's like my, like my mission and, and my calling, I feel like in this season. So, okay. I understand and I feel you on that also. I, I've actually, I grew up in the country and the city. Um, first half of my life, I was in the upstate Spartanburg, South Carolina. Then middle school, I moved to Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. So big culture shock, huge lifestyle change. Um, I appreciate it though, because it exposed me to a lot of different cultures. And it, that was my real first exposure to travel, <laughs> <laughs> to like travel and meeting different people and seeing a completely different way of life. And the funny thing is I actually found that I prefer the up North way of life. Like people like to comment on them and say they're rude and this, that, and the third, but like they, they're very, they're personable to an extent, but not as personable as they are in the South. Like me, I love people, but I don't like people. I'm very introverted. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So up north, I don't have to worry about people on face. Hey, how you doing? Blah, blah, blah. And trying to like force this conversation is <laughs> like, go over there and do your work. Like, leave me alone. Like, I don't have to say it. It's, it's, it's a known thing. So, um, but you're right. The, the exposure thing, I think that name and your concept behind it is great because that's what a lot of people lack. And there's no age limit to that. You can be 40, 50 years old and never been exposed to anything. Like I've taught kids... Yeah who've never left the city that they live in. 15, 16, I've worked with kids who've never left the city, don't know what a beach looks like, don't even know yep. what Columbia, South Carolina looks like. Like, it's scary. Right. So right. exposure is definitely important. Now, let's yeah. let, let's get into your, okay. <laughs> your blog post. Okay. So I want to talk about, <laughs> oh, I think I got the titles right. Uh, yeah, her thoughts. So... You said fear kicked your ass. Now, yeah. <laughs> this is important. There's a lot of people who are probably listening right now. Um, shout out to my listeners. Our last podcast got 93 listens on SoundCloud. Thank y'all. That was and it was quick. That was just last week. Um, thank y'all for tuning in. Like- <laughs> <laughs> you there's a lot of pe- fear is a big thing. Fear stops a lot of people from doing a lot of things that may may be very simple. And once you start it, it's kind of like Oh, huh. that's it. <laughs> so what was it in regards to blogging? What was it that you were afraid of? Because that's what you talked about the majority in that post, but. Um, being vulnerable. I mean, putting your stuff out there, like, and I still like, I don't feel like I have um, fully tapped into that. Like, I feel like I've jumped. I'm like in this pond, but I, I feel like I'm discovering like different pieces of the pond. Like, as I'm writing, like understanding my writing style, understanding what it is that I like. Sometimes I start on one topic and then I find myself like writing, writing, writing. And like in the background, I have like all these drafts. Um, and it's like choosing what goes out. And mm-hmm. I, um, and just being vulnerable, like that's, that's a big thing for me. Like I want to be transparent. I feel like having been in the box, um, I feel like there was people that knew me from church and there was people that knew me from school. Then there was people that knew me from work. And then it's yeah. like, Oh, you know me because we acted together. You know me from this play and you just know a sliver of me. And it's like, um, I got tired of trying to fit in everybody else's box and all these boxes are different and under different shapes and different sizes. And it's like, that was a lot for me. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to change the narrative and I'm going to put my own story out there and I'm going to express myself like I'm going to be the storyteller. So this is my opportunity to do that. And I'm enjoying it so Mm -hmm. far. Um, It's a new blog. This is something I've only started like at the beginning of the summer. Um, It's been one of those things as you, you, the, from the post, like I talk about how years in the making, like, um, but finally, um, it, it came to a point, either you're going to do this, Jessica, like, because I'm really um, no BS type person yeah. um, when it comes to business and life and 
I usually don't take a lot of excuses from other people, like, um, or I don't entertain, I would say, a lot of excuses from uh, people. But with that, I, I had to talk to myself and, like, almost um, have one of those conversations with self where you're like, no, like, either you're going to do this or not. Yep. Like, like, you have said that you're going to do this for now, two years now. And I haven't seen a blog. Ooh, so two years. I've told people two years. <laughs> like it was. Lo- it was. I mean, when I think about the full time frame uh-huh. of beginning to end, um, it was probably longer than that. Honestly, okay. Like I came up with the beauty blog at one point. Like it was all these little pieces in my head that I'm. I'm like, I'm gonna do this. I want to do that. And like putting it all together. And um, here I. I mean. Now I'm glad I did it, but I'm glad I had that talk. I'm glad I had that revelation. And even, I shouldn't say it was just me. Like even some of my friends, they Mm -hmm. um, would have a conversation. So what are you going to do? Like, where are you? Like, are you going to do this or not? Like, um, and I think that is important. Having a group of people around you that's committed to your success as much as you are, because there's some days where you have blind spots. There's some days where you don't, you're not even aware of yourself because you're actively growing and you're actively changing and like becoming this this other person um, per se. So it takes a good support system, whether that be family or friends, um, to to kind of cultivate that in you and want that for you some days too because you, you're not going to always see it. So yeah, shout yeah. out to my friends that, that have stood behind me in the background. <laughs> yes, shout out to y'all friends. <laughs> um you just wow, you just really dropped some gems right there. So any of y'all who've been sitting on the idea or sitting on something you were supposed to do 2, 3, 5, 10 years ago, do it. Take the yes. leap. Like literally, I have it as soon as you walk into my apartment, I have a chalkboard and it says just do it. Mm. Like and that has resonated with, like, I, I wrote it myself, like, it's nothing fancy, like, on the chalk, frame piece of chalkboard, but it, it says that, one, for a right, reminder for myself and, and everybody that walks through that door, like, you, we all have this little stuff that's just in our heads, like, yep. that we're, we, we cap, and we cap it before it can even, even um, birth itself, because we say, like, oh, well, I don't have time. Well, I don't have enough money. I don't have, like, what, how am I supposed to do this? And I'm still in school or, you know, I work two jobs already. So how can I add that? And you have to literally do it because your mind will tell you a thousand reasons why not to. And that's what I found in my own journey. Um, I, I, I just have to push myself. Like sometimes I had a conversation with someone yesterday about you have to just put set yourself up like sometimes you put yourself in fearful situations just so that you can perform yeah. just so that I can meet my fear head on um and and address it that way so yeah I don't know yeah just, no you you know <laughs> I, I I had to do that I don't know if you can see behind me my DJ equipment like I wanted mm-hmm. to DJ and I was talking about it my issue is I like certainty, but I know everything in life isn't certain. So I will do a shit ton of research on something before I actually mm-hmm. jump into it. And I realize, dude, by the time you get your research done, something new done came out and you got to throw that away. So I just right. ordered it. I was like, I want this, 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 and this. And I ordered it. And I was like, oh, shoot, it's here. It's in my house. Like, I'm hooking this stuff up. <laughs> this, I'm spending money on this. I need to use it. So it's like you right. said, like, <laughs> I had to right. put myself in that situation. And that's exactly what it does. So when you bought it, like now, you know, you have to use it, but then you start experimenting with it and yep. you play with it and you're like, you know what I like. And, and before you know it, you've already transitioned from the jump to the doing to the process yep. to like, and before you know it, you're, you're just in your apartment, your house. A friend comes by. I'm like, man, I didn't know you do that. I actually have a birthday party. Yep. And it like, always flows like that. But you can never get to that and you'll cap yourself if you never buy the equipment or if you never do it or if you, you just keep, it just sits in your Amazon, you know, your mm-hmm. checkout. 
think you have to, you have to do it. You owe it to yourself, and um, that's I, I mean I live by it now because there's so much of my life that I would never guess. Like I recently took on a can doing making candles mm-hmm. and a candle line, and like who who would think that I would be making candles? Right. Like, that just blows my mind. <laughs> and it came out of wanting, I just wanted to create and wanted to do it. And then one thing led to another. And I just started playing around with it, playing around with the um, the labels. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, I'm going to do this. Like, and so now I have a candle eye. So I don't know. Life is, is very interesting. You never know where you start out because I, I had I when I met you like in college, I knew of you. Mm-hmm. Um, but like at that time, I never would have predicted this life. Like, <laughs> like, like we would be right here. Like you never know how yeah. it maneuvers and goes and goes and goes until you end right now. And so I, I tell everybody, stay the course, stay the course because, and stay, know your course. Like sometimes we get caught up in other people's lanes yes. and you just stay, in your lane, because if not, you're going to miss something very, um, intricate, not intricate. That's not the right word. Very, um, specific for your, for your journey, for your task. Right. Um, and and if you're watching, if I'm watching your lane, I'm not going to see it in my own when it presents itself and I'm not going to be able to attack and address it and, 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 and totally utilize that moment. So exactly. And here's the other thing about that, too. Like, I found myself caught up in that a few times in my life. And I kind of believe that life kind of works in circles like you're doomed to repeat it until you recognize it. And then you have to make a change when you see that situation come up, when you see those similar circumstances come up. It's like, wait, I kind of been through this. I am that friend that's very supportive. You know, I'll ride or die with you. But I have to remember, they're doing this to benefit them because this is what they love. This is their dream. So naturally, I'm not going to have the same passion for it because I might not even like what the hell you're doing. But I love you, so I support you. And I had to realize I can help you and support you, but I can't give you all of me because what about me? You know what I'm saying? So you sitting over here loving it, enjoying it, living up the life. And I'm just kind of like hanging in there but it's like eh what is, what is there really for me so i've kind of right. had to learn some of those lessons that you just spoke about um and i'm actually i'm glad we we weren't we weren't really that acquainted in college i was horrible i was <laughs> <laughs> i've grown a lot like i i, I thank some of my horrible. friends no i was i was <laughs> i had issues man i'm better now though but well, <laughs> yeah I was, we all were i think i think that that's what college mm, is Nah, you were an angel. I I ain't hear no stories about you. None. I was booed up. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. See. <laughs> All right. Right. So we talking about? <laughs> Wait, you want to talk about booed up? No, no, not today. <laughs> no, what? <I> t- <laughs> There's not much to discuss. <laughs> oh no. We gotta talk about the booed. Say that again. We gotta talk about the booze. We can't talk about okay. the booze. Okay. Well, I'll, I, I don't. I, I'll wait. <laughs> but um, I'll wait. Hold on. I'll wait. I'll wait. Let me. Let okay. me. All right. <clears throat> so, in 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 moving forward through your blog a bit, you talk about transforming your mood, which is I think when I read that, I'm like, oh my god, where's she been all my life? <laughs> I'm such a believer in those things. So. What inspired that post? Because so often we let people still have joy. Like I work, okay, so I deal with a lot of people on a daily basis. Um, I have a studio in Plano, Texas, and um, lots of women. um, And just in general, I see a lot of different people. I have male clients, just people that are constantly um just i don't, I don't want to say stuck because that's not it it's not it, it's more um in a funk like mm-hmm. all the days going okay like if you ask someone how how's their day then it it may be i'm fine and it's just not they say i'm at, and i'm fine and i i think that you could turn fine into amazing you can turn you know, 
whatever that state is into whatever you want it to be. And it doesn't require, um, a, not a lot of effort, but it doesn't require much. It doesn't require like things and stuff. Like mm -hmm. it can be very, very simple. And like, you have to truly tap into what it is that your body needs, what your spirit needs, what your soul needs. And I mean, that's like the essence of my brand, Lash and Soul. I feel like there's a lot of shameless plugs on this. No, we're here <laughs> for the plugs. Plug it, plug it now. Tell them where they can get that. Uh, at Lash and, listen to me, at Lash and Soul Studio. Uh, but I have a Lash Extension Studio in Plano, Texas. And um, that's where you can also purchase your candles. You can purchase in studio or online. But um, that is the, the fingerprint of my brand. Like, I want to connect with people's souls. Like, I want people to feel something. And I think we all deserve to feel something. So Transform Your Mood is about turning like lemons into lemonade like right. that's how you transform your mood and i think i kind of probably got off a little bit at the beginning of that but you ha you have to learn as adults life every day is not going to be peachy keen nope. so do you stay does, the, does is that a permission for you to be just in a funk or do you recognize you know i had a bad day today but the day per se is over once I come back into my home, my home is supposed to be a sacred place, a, a, a place that um, uplifts me, a place that I feel safe. Um, and so why not utilize that space to the fullest? And if it's not those things, then you have all the power to change it into those things. So whether that be wall color or mm -hmm. um, I, I have Edison light bulbs. I like them. I think that they, they're calming for me. So right. like it almost exudes a candle light, but it's uh, electric light. And so like small little pieces like that, I think change your space, so. True, so I wanna hit these topics. So in, okay. this, in this blog post, you talk about music, you talk about smells, sage cleansing which i have a love hate relationship with i got a story okay. about that i gotta hear i want to know why Cle <laughs> clearing your head and then you talk about the light so you kind of touched on the light so tell us about some of your music um okay so as i mentioned in the pod I mean, not the podcast the the post mm -hmm. um with music i love music like i'm i i resonated with it i think it's one of those things that no matter the language, you can feel it. It, it expresses itself. Um, so for me, like, I like a lot of neo soul. Like, um, mm -hmm. I'm not, I think, a, I think a, automatically people assume that I only probably listen to Jill Scott, but I listen to her. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you, wait, <laughs> you do Everyone look like you listen to mad Jill Scott. I'm not going <laughs> to. I am ready for love. Like, I just feel like every time, like, no matter what, like, people probably think I'm somewhere in a seance, like, um, but there's more to me. <laughs> there's a lot more to me. So, like, um, Tom Meesh, he's a very soulful Who? artist. Tom Meesh. I like him. You should look him up. I know. Um, a terrible new DJ artist brand. that I discovered. Uh, her name is Kait, and I think it's spelled K-A-I-I-T. But, like, there's some artists that I've been, like, looking up, uh, like, because I try to keep it fresh in the studio and mm -hmm. stuff like that. So, I'm not the best with music. I actually subscribe to Apple Music because one of hey. my line sisters, she also uh, subscribed. Mm -hmm. So... I use her playlist. Yeah, got <laughs> <laughs> Word, I love. Shout out to Apple Music. Apple, can I get some sponsorship? Yeah. Thanks. Yeah, um, me too. Lash and Soul Studios. <laughs> <laughs> Lash and Soul Studios. Yo, so, I agree with you. Like, when I wake up in the morning, it's funny. This is how I know I'm getting older and ma more mature. When I realize the power of music, I actually listen to sounds of the ocean. When I can't sleep or when I first start my day, I listen to the sounds mm -hmm. of the ocean. It's very soothing. <laughs> And then, you know, I turn on my crunk music. I got a nice playlist for when I'm going to work and I got to get ready to deal with these people. Or if I need to relax, I have a certain playlist. Mm -hmm. So I'm definitely rolling with you on that. So it sounds like you already know how to transform your mood. I do. Yeah, I do. See. 
sometimes silence is is my favorite but this is true you have to know what you need like you have to listen to like be really in tune and listen to what your soul needs and sometimes yeah. it's silent it's nothing it needs to hear like and, and just reflect so yep know what you need so all right smells now this is a personal favorite of mine like there are, and this is, I, I guess this is psychological. There are certain smells that will just completely wipe out all stress and frustration for me. Like, there's like, when I, even though it's not my childhood home, when I go home to visit my mom in the upstate, like the way her house smells or when she starts cooking, like, mm -hmm. I, I know I'm going like in left field with the smells, but like, it's okay. there's this certain, it's just like, even though I love you, mom, my mom be getting on my nerves, my brother get on my nerves. Just being <laughs> in her house, there's just a certain level of comfort and relaxation. I have yet to achieve that <laughs> in my own yet, but I'm right. working on it. I got my little candle burner over there, you know what I'm saying? I do that, and I got a couple, you know, waxes and stuff like that. Shout out to Scentsy. Um, <laughs> shout out to Nakia, my Scentsy consultant. <laughs> but yeah, so tell us about, tell us, um, about some of your scents. Okay, so currently I think I have um, my candles burning in my space, um, which uh, my favorite is Nubian Hippie. Um, it's probably the mm. most controversial of the line because it's made with the ca uh, cannabis flower hey. uh, <laughs> scent. <laughs> um, Y'all be getting uh, high? Oil. No, does it get you high? Yeah. No, uh -huh. I'm sorry. <laughs> He looks sad. It doesn't get you high. I was asking for the audience. No, um, no, it doesn't get you high. <laughs> you can get high with the candle, but it doesn't get you high. Okay. <laughs> That's all I have. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, so I love incense. Um, I bought back some really good incense from um, Bali when I came back that I like. And they kind of really transformed my mood. Okay. Um, but even down to like oils, like when I like the legwood oil I'm going to use when I get out of the shower, like um, it, it depends on what I'm, where I'm trying to go, like in my head. So there's certain oils that I know like, oh, look, I need to relax. Like, so right. I'm really in tune with myself um, and like to know what it is that I want to smell and experience. Um, what else? Candles, my incense. Oh, there's so much. I do waxes too. Okay. Like a lot of different sprays. I, yeah. You My know, favorite are scents that are like um, kind of layered, but okay. that are fresh. Like have a fresh, like um, warm warmth to them. I like fresh scents. Okay. Word. <sighs> Sage. So. Let's hear it. I want to hear. It. Now I'm interviewing you. We switched. <laughs> so tell me, how do you feel about Sage? <laughs> so Sage has a very interesting um, history that I don't know. But I do know that it has, uh, I think the odor is, ple I don't want to call it odor. Odor, I, that, that has a negative connotation to me. Mm -hmm. um, it has a pleasant smell, in my opinion. It's kind of like a refreshing, nature-y, I don't know. I just like it. But mm -hmm. um, I'm a realtor, and I had someone selling the house, and they used mm -hmm. to burn sage all the time, and all that mm -hmm. damn soot was everywhere. And like in my feedback from people showing it, they're like, "Oh, the the windows ha like the the you know the ashes or whatever so, from it everywhere." Wow, well, I don't have that problem. Well, Maybe, I don't have that problem with sage. It's every, I don't have ashes around my house. I don't yo, think I do. Listen, Let me go, like, love it. <laughs> you might listen. No, hers was like I, it was like caked on like the window seals and stuff. Like you would have thought you were in a tomb. Like, but how often you do you burn it though? Oh, not that. Often. No, we don't have that going on over here. Um, she did it like er day. So okay, no, I do not sage that much. Uh, I sage about weekly. It depends. Um, some days, like if it's a rough day, mm -hmm. one of those days where I need to decompress, and I'm like saging. But on the on average, I'd say about once, maybe twice a week. Okay. Well, maybe yeah. maybe that, that makes all the difference. But they definitely... And you could smell it. I mean, 
from the time you open the door to you go upstairs, it, it filled the whole house and you could see it. Like oh, it yeah. had a presence. Yeah, that's a little that's a little much. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone said the house smelled nice though, so <laughs> But I well, did read that you good. said it, it, it like cleans the air and stuff like that. Yeah, um, I learned that. Um, so it basically purifies the air, like the bacteria in the air by by the smudging. So mm. I thought that was pretty cool. All right. So um, you already talked about lights and your lighting. Do um, you want to delve into that a little bit more? Are you good? Um. No, I think we're good. Okay, so you talked about candlelight. You talked about... I, mean, I like candlelight. I like the, like I said, the Edison light bulb. Um, when I have guests over, like, I choose my lighting. Like, really? I know... That, yeah, I do. Like, my friends, they know, like... <laughs> does it depend? Like, all right, so if your boo's coming over, does it depends on the time of change? the day. Like, what lights that I want. I don't want all... Like, like, right now, the lighting in my apartment is slightly off. Uh, but uh, it, it's off because I I'm doing this. Okay. But like I normally would at this point turn on the, the my lamps by my television. Like there's certain I I really like lighting. I like to feel like a certain I don't know. So you be having a high ass electric bill sometimes. Um, <laughs> currently I didn't know the patio was lights on. I I see it out of my peripheral, but I'm like no, I'm not going to deal with that right now. I'm focused. <laughs> you need to go turn it off, look, because I can't help you pay your bills. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you said something. This is one of the most important things I think you said in this section, which is clearing your head. And, um, you know, you alluded to a couple of things. So <laughs> whether it be a walk or lighting one up, whatever it is, what okay. do you think the importance is of just clearing your head? And do you have any recommendations for someone who may not have yet discovered how to clear their head? Clearing your head is a lot of different things. I mean, it goes back to knowing what you need, one, because you can't clear something if you don't you haven't identified what needs to be cleared. Mm. Um, so, like, no, listening to yourself, like, knowing when you need to break away. When, when do I need to be, like, Step away from my friends for a moment and just, you know, accomplish something, whether that's personal time or maybe it is that you need your friends and you've been confined for a week doing work and you need to be, you know, have that release. So um, clearing my head for me, I like to truly decompress. Sometimes I sit in my car uh, for about 30 minutes after I get home and I'm in my parking spot and back then. But... I still just sit there and I kind of just let the day like settle. Mm -hmm. um, I don't have any specific thing to do within that 30 minute time frame. Um, so I may think of kind of map out a plan for the evening if I have a lot of tasks that I need to get done. Um, so that or sometimes it's just mindless um, Instagram scrolling and getting inspiration from other other bloggers like um you just have to identify what you're clearing your head from mm -hmm. so that you know what that that requires i think um sometimes it's decompressing a bath like i i, I believe in shower like in and what a shower can do for you i think mm -hmm. i talked well, i know i talked about that um, yes that's that's next we're gonna talk okay. about your fruity pebble bath okay. <laughs> 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 I uh, said, where Let's see. <laughs> so yeah, we can segue to the baths, but I, I like I like baths and showers. Okay, we say that we're gonna talk about that too. That actually, that's okay. next. Um, what I was about to say to you. Oh, here's a suggestion I have for people. Um, and this is I haven't done this in a long time, and that's probably why I'm like. I'm very tense. I'm very wound up right now. And even a couple of people have said to me, Rob, you don't seem like your normal self. And it's because I'm not. And one of my friends, um, shout out to Swazi. She was like, we are not connected with nature. Like physically. Mm. Like, oh my God. Oh my God. I'm sorry. <laughs> I wish y'all could see what I just saw. I know, right? So... I'm 
so special. I'm she, really special. No, you're I'm good. Special. Like, <laughs> when she broke it down, she was like, think about it. You're in a car. Your tires are touching. Like, we're literally physically disconnected. Like, when's the last time you actually touched the earth or leaned against the tree? And so, like, she said it's so refreshing just to go outside barefoot, let the grass go in between your toes. Around people. Yes. You want to ground yourself. You want to put your feet and connect with the earth. Like, that is very spiritual. It's very holistic. And you think that it seems... I mean, from the country, it's normal. Like, I used to run around and walk outside Same. barefoot. Like, so... I, I still like, like to do it. I see how certain pieces of my life, like, have manifested out of all of that. Because, like, I was, I was connected. So I'm glad you kind of stayed there a little bit. Because I love going back to how do you clear my how do I clear my mind sometimes I go outside on my patio like I've created my patio to be a space uh, additional space to my apartment mm -hmm. so it's extension um when I need a place to like really feel the, the breeze and, and smell the air and like just take it all in um it's very comfortable for me so like that's something that I I highly suggest everyone take the time like I don't know. There's so many pockets of time that you could do that. Yeah. Whether it's on your lunch break. I remember I would go on my lunch break. There was a pond, like, um, within mm. the shopping center. And I would go, even if I brought my lunch to work, I would walk across the street and go to the pond and just sit there and eat my lunch. And people watch and watch the ducks and, like, just really take it all in. And, like, I think that that was, like, my mental saving grace at that season in my life because that was right before I was about to open my studio. And like, um, I was going through a lot in that in that time mm -hmm. and to be able to release it and like to just totally disconnect. So I, I think nature is amazing, like to your yeah. soul. Y'all totally. make, make time for it too, y'all. Like I live, I mean, I'm in, I'm in Charleston. I don't care telling people where I'm at. Um, and I got mad beaches and stuff like here. And I can't tell you the last time I went to the beach because I'm so wrapped up and wound up with everything else that I'm doing. And I really need to make time for it. That's one of the benefits and advantages to where I live. So definitely connect with nature. For me, my, my um clear my head, I like to go for a walk, like a real nice walk, you know, around the trees and grass and all that. And just like, just walk, man, and just listen to music and just breathe in fresh air and just let it all out. And I try, like something you said, I try not to bring, and it sounds like you do this. You didn't say it, but this is the vibe I get from you, and I'm the same way. It sounds like you don't bring or allow certain types of energy in your house. Like, if you're frustrated or upset, mm -hmm. I try to leave it outside in the car, yell, cuss, open the sunroof, turn up the crump music, whatever. You stay out there, but you will not disturb my peace in here. This is my sanctuary yeah my escape from the world or whatever my problems yeah. are y'all be out on the other side of the door i'll see you later when i'm in here uh, -uh i can't let you in exactly exactly yes and that's and a lot of times i think that that's where that waiting in the car piece came from um just because i needed that and i did it for so long and so like some days i don't have anything heavy mm -hmm. and you know like i come in the house but for the most part like i know I need that time to just kind of leave it there because you cannot disturb my peace. And like, this is my peace. Like when I lay my head down, like I want to sleep in peace. I want to feel like safe and, and comfortable and whole. And so that's what this is. Um, man, outdoors is amazing. Yes. Amazing. Like, and someone told me um, this and it's something that I've been implementing in in your walks and in in paying attention absorbing it but like try to focus on every detail as if you were almost in an escape room or something mm -hmm. like um not just seeing the like walking on a trail and seeing the trees like the trees is so there like that's a, a lot yeah. but like what type of tree is that like in like yeah to, to it and like look at like oh my god do you see that that, that has like uh, actual yellow little teeny buds on it or like whatever it is like truly paying attention to it yeah, yeah. because we're like living in this masterpiece and we haven't i don't i don't think a lot of times we take the time to really explore it like no. to see it like for its true beauty so 
we'll look at some an, a, a nature post on Instagram before we go outside and look at it in real life where we can see it, touch it, and interact right. with it. Right. Which is crazy. Um, it's crazy. <laughs> All right. So I'm not going to keep you too much longer. I got a million questions for you. All right. Grace. Hi, I'm good. Okay. Don't play with me. I keep you. Um, no, I'm good. I, I mean, I know what we said, but I didn't, I didn't understand what I was doing. So I'm good. I'm having fun. Okay. Good. Good. Grace in a vulnerable place. So we're going to talk about your delectable melanin bath that you took looking like looking like a bowl of fruity pebbles with all them <laughs> <laughs> oh god I, I was scrolling on instagram y'all and all i saw was was these exotic flower petals and some legs and i said who is this and i said oh <laughs> so <laughs> oh my god so <laughs> Let, let's talk about that. Let's talk about that in particular. Um, that bath looked like it meant a lot to you, number one. It looked very soothing. And in that blog post, you talk a lot about securing your peace and letting God hear you when you're um, kind of like when you're most vulnerable. Because, I mean, obviously in the bath, you're naked, you're in water, you're relaxed. It's pretty vulnerable because it's just you in the water and you have no choice but to start thinking. So... Right. I know I asked you like eight questions just now, but talk about <laughs> talk about the important because you touched on it and I said I was gonna get to it. So talk talk to me a bit more about bathing and why it's important and just talking to God in those vulnerable moments. Um, because sometimes we're so busy and we have so much going on that we don't we don't hear um, God's voice because there's a lot going on, like. Um, you don't even hear, you know, your coworkers voice or whoever it may be, like talking to you because you're in your own thoughts. And I feel like to be in such a vulnerable environment, it's all everything's off. Like, and um, the point of it is to relax. Like, I, I like I think you take a bath to to totally relax and to cleanse right. yourself. Um, and to, to to let it go, and so I again experienced like how can I take this bath to the next level? One, um, and and using it for my good, like not just to to, to I could have took a shower in that case, right. like you know, like um, so that's why I don't know. Baths are important to me. They're just a space where I can really like um, relax. And like, even it's funny, the irony is that I, I think before we started recording, mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, well, let me go take a shower. But I actually took a bath. Okay. I was like, I'm going to take a quick bath. So <laughs> um, it's just one of, it, it, it's very soothing for me. I don't know. And in Bali, it was like the plate, the capital of ba bathing and, and spa really? and massage is not the capital. I'm naming it that. <laughs> <laughs> you unofficial like, capitals. Spa information. However, um, <laughs> it, I mean, there you can get massages, like $10 massages. So oh. I, I think I got a massage every day. I got either a massage or a pedicure daily wow. um, because it was so cheap. Like, um, that's the culture there, and they were amazing. I mean, as you can see from the picture, I think it's a pretty elaborate bath. Oh, so, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, like, when you come out of that, like, how do you not feel rejuvenated? Like, how do you not feel empowered? And I think it's a, a, a great place to restore yourself that's that's vulnerable, but it's it's, like... You, no one else knows like no one else knows what goes on in that time so why not like allow yourself to like truly um capitalize off of it because you can you can you can say your truest thought you can um just use that time for you whatever it is that you need and sometimes i have i use it i, I play music and i i do my playlist and i just like listen and i just kind of go into my own space but then there's other moments where I, I do need it to be quiet and I just want to enjoy it like and, and talk and like um, process I think because it's not always talking it's just sometimes just processing my thoughts and like like really like thinking through is this what I want to do like is this where yeah. I want to be is this like how I want is this what I want my brand to be reflective of or 
like the, the, everything that I do, like I, I, I try to be very intentional about and you can't be intentional without placing intention on something. And so like taking a moment to, to do it. And, um, yeah, that's my, that's my time. I like it a lot. Uh, um, I really appreciate you for actually posting that and showing that. I don't know. Now I wash y'all, so don't get it twisted. <laughs> I don't know the last time I took a bath, yo. Like, right? Like a lot of people don't take baths. Like a lot of people. Like, and that's okay. Yeah. Because um, I was one of those people for the longest. Um, and I, I hope I didn't cut you off. No, you um, good. But in in the post, I I was one of those people that had. Yep. No, I'm not taking a bath. I'm grown. Yeah, <laughs> right. It, it, don't bathe no more. Yeah, <laughs> like, like that's not a real thing. Like, um, like I, to have a like on my trip, there was a shower outside, and there's a picture of that in the post. Um, and a tub outside. Like, why would I not take advantage of this? Like, why would I? Like, why am I here? Like, to not fully dive in and see what's on the other side, and um. I don't know. I just reconnected with that. It, it's just a very quiet place. It's, it's very comforting. I don't like, like, it, I don't know. Like, and it can be whatever you need it to be, whether, mm -hmm. like, you, you determine that um, for yourself. So I always soup mine up, but it is what it is. <laughs> so y'all go to Bali, take you a Fruity Pebble bath. Um, a Fruity <laughs> Pebble bath. We renamed it. I did. <laughs> I did. You know, I was going to ask you something else, but I ain't going to ask you that. Um, okay. It was about another picture you took by a window. <laughs> we can go there. All right. So <laughs> it's a no. moment of transparency. Like, okay. this is why. I, Tell us is... about this picture, because I don't want people like, Rob, why are you asking that? So you do it. <laughs> so you want me to tell you about the picture, so you don't have to ask me that. Yeah. Listen, okay. I know the people you're associated with. Y'all still scare me. Love y'all. Oh, <laughs> love y'all. Y'all know I love y'all. You make but me sound like I'm affiliated with gangsters. You're definitely oh. not. You're affiliated with people who are dead ass serious and they don't play ah. when it comes to their loved ones. This I know. This I, I still hold near and dear to my heart. Amen. I received that. <laughs> um... That picture is a picture that. Tell them what it is. Don't do that. Okay, so I posted a picture, um, with in my underwear, like facing a window. Um, it was on a recent trip to Jamaica, and it was just my my way of expressing like my my art, my creativity, like all mm -hmm. of me. Um, in a tasteful way, because like that was tasteful. I think all the things that I do, I like to. I feel like they're tasteful. Um, that's always my in intent. It was tasteful, um, but it to was. just to it, it said free jest, and that's what it was. Like um, it was like this is. I have one life in my life. I want to use it for good. I want to use it to like inspire people to like embrace who they are like in every form um whether that be physically embracing who you are um the mental portion of that like mm -hmm. embracing like what that means to you and, and defining yourself and just living in your truth and that was my ballsy way like every <laughs> my friends know that I'm I wouldn't say a nudist or anything like that but like <laughs> Maybe you are. No, go ahead. No, like, I am, I just like being free. Like, I'm okay. free. Like, I like less clothes as possible. I'm like a summertime girl. I like to be bathing suits, like, just sundresses. That's me. Oh, um, yeah. So, yeah. So, I, to them, it's never shocking. And, like, that, that, they get that a lot on day to day life. But, it was one of those things like I would never, I would never because I would, I would have never posted that picture mm -hmm. five years ago. And I think that that's probably where we, the, the learning point of it and, and the deeper piece to it is five years ago, 10 years ago, you name it. Like I wouldn't have posted that picture because I would have thought too much of what everybody else would have had to say about it. Yep. And now I can post that picture and I feel, I actually feel empowered to, 
to do it. And like, there's more to come, I guess. But um, <laughs> I know some but, photographers, um, but go ahead. But yeah, like I, I just, I'm really proud of where I am, what I've done, like my life. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I feel incredibly blessed because there's a lot of days where I don't, I don't realize like why I'm doing it or how I got here. And I was in Jamaica. And that was just like an opportunity, like looking out of that window and like looking in and, and realizing like, man, like I, like I've done a lot of crazy, cool, like things in my lifetime mm-hmm. and I'm living dreams of before. Like when I was in high school, I would dream to travel and, and yep. to like to do some of the things that I've done. So like now I'm doing them and it just blows my mind. So that's what that picture was about. It was just about jumping leaping embracing just do you who took that picture yeah it was actually part of the the gangster squad that you just read <laughs> <laughs> no i did not refer to them as a gangster squad <laughs> well, no, did not no my line sister took that picture okay. <laughs> the gangster squad i think that's it should be funny. noted though like that's a different girl trip they are like yeah. we're just so comfortable like, oh, yeah. listen I, no, listen yeah like closed doors and stuff like yeah. that they're like who took the picture who took the... no it was, i was it... just trying to see if it was a boo i you know i was just oh, being nosy there's still no boo maybe we should do a shameless plug for that okay hmm. still no boo still no boo <laughs> <laughs> does a boo even matter right now though is that a priority for you is that something you even think about <laughs> no um it's not something that it, it is something that I desire. I think a lot of times, honestly, a lot of people assume that I don't want that. Like you don't need a man or you don't need, you know, anyone. And I'm at a, life, a point in my life where I do want to share my life with somebody. Like I, I want a partner, but I got a lot of stuff to do in the meantime until that person finds his course. So like, I'm, I'm happy. I I'm learning how to make, me happy like and not make me happy I'm gonna, like like what what is my happiness what does that yes, mean because yes. for so long i think so many people talk about a mate making them happy but that's not gonna do it like they can still get your happiness but they're not gonna make you happy and i know what i like so i can yep. tell the person when when they mm-hmm. when it presents itself like this is what i like so that you can i can help you you know yes. love me like and i think that's how it's supposed to work like you're not supposed to i don't assume that people know know what i want and know mm-hmm. know what i need i need to tell you sometimes this is what i need and so oh my god you I'm, sound so in perfect. order to do that i sound what you so you sound so perfect go ahead oh thank you <laughs> <laughs> oh my say that last part I'm, I'm gonna repeat it for you sometimes okay. you have to tell us ladies Sometimes you have to tell us. Yes. You have to but tell us sometimes. In their defense, that's where I'm sh- that that's where life is um a journey because I'm I'm learning at 33 years old to use my voice, to right. use my voice in a way that I've never used it before mm-hmm. instead of just talking and having a conversation. Like I would ne- like I'm on a podcast right now and this is blowing my mind. Like <laughs> I'm humbled by it because Wow, who would thought who would have thought that someone would want to hear what I have to say? But I, I have to use my voice, and I've, I'm learning in this realm. But even in relationships, there was times where I w- I didn't know to tell someone what I wanted. I didn't know mm-hmm. um, because I was scared that they may leave, thinking that I needed that person. Right. And sometimes when you're broken, which we all have this level of brokenness. Um, from different things, um, not always infidelity, but just imperfections that 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 are our own personal brokenness. And I think until you learn how to use your voice in all all admi- all platforms, including a relationship, like you can't, you really can't communicate um, or or ha- or have it be heard and such. Like you you need to be able to say it so that people can hear it. And they're not going to assume it. And yes. like, even if they get a few things right, assuming it, you can't, you can't assume that they have, you know, the rest of it together. Yeah. So 
that's what I'm learning. I'm learning how, how do I, I have to make my, I have to find my happy. And I keep saying make myself happy. It's not like a, something that's a chore. It's something that I want to do. Like I, going out of the house or before I go to sleep, like, do I want to tease? Do I, like whatever yeah. it is, it's like I'm, I'm doing that for myself so that I, I can clearly identify it when it presents myself as a mate mm-hmm. or I can, I can personally identify it for my mate. So. Yo, yeah. you just like, <laughs> some of y'all need to rewind that whole section back. Like, yo, like, <laughs> I'm like on the exact same page with you. I'm a firm believer that cause I, this has happened to me. I find myself in relationships and I've always been a self learner, a self grower. I've always been wise beyond my years. I seem to have slowed down now, but if the person you're with doesn't know how to be happy without you or has not found some level of personal happiness, they're looking for you to fulfill that. And you cannot, mm-hmm. You can not. Some people may tolerate it and deal with you and stick out the relationship and y'all may get married and have five kids or whatever, but they're always going to have something missing because that's just not, it's impossible for someone, I think, to come into your life and give you that. Like you have to have, like for me, like you said, I make myself, like I'm good by myself. Yes, I want to be married and have kids and all that, but I'm good. I know what I like. I know what I enjoy. So I engage in that. But when it comes to a woman, I want someone who is going to compliment me in those regards. You ain't got to be into the same things that I'm into, but if you support me and you allow me to support you and we can have conversations about it and we can engage in these things together, that's all I need. I'm not looking for you to quote unquote, make me happy, but I'm looking right. for you to compliment my life. Just like I want to compliment your life. And that's going to take communication. Right. Yep. No one, no one can make you happy. Happiness is within. Happiness is personal. Happiness is, you know, your you define that. And I think that it's, it's very important in, in, in your adult life, in, at any point in your life, period, that you, you can identify those things. Um, because once you do, once you understand that, you recognize how much power you have personally. Yep. And that... That's how I can transform my mood because Uh like I I know what makes me happy. So when I'm not happy, I go, I gravitate to my happiness. Like what, what right now can I do that will make me happy in this moment that will give me joy, give me peace that I need because I'm lacking that right now. And I think that that, that is how you transform your form your mood and it's personal it's not someone else doing that for you or flowers because all of those things they're just things and when they go away when life presents itself like flowers are not going to get you through and if you thought that that's what it was like yep. you're going to be sadly mistaken take it from me <laughs> oh no <laughs> like, i mean i'm just saying I, i've i've learned a lot like i've i've had my heart broken i, I feel like i might have who broke your heart broken. what I mean, not, not like a Debbie Downer. I've had my heart broken. Like, I mean, that's life. But yeah, right. out of that brokenness, that comes such healing and such awareness. Like my lowest, lowest, uh, I would say relationship in terms of where my heart was like broken or destroyed. It rebirthed like an amazing person, like spiritually, yeah. like, man, Girl, if you can get through that, like, well, you can get through anything. And, like, you can do it. Now you you know the sacrifice. So it work, it's so much. Like, I, I'm worth more because I know what I've, my process. I know what I went through. Mm-hmm. And so, um, I don't know. Because I know I'm worth more, then I treat myself as more. And I'm going to attract more. Like, and, and somebody else is going to. I'm done. Wait, repeat. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Your face. No, say that last part one more again, please. When I know that I am more, I'm going to. What the, I, yes, you, 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 you said when I know that I'm. More. Yes, because you're going to attract I more. Words. I know I'm worth more, so that I see myself as that. So when you come at me with like 
um, what's the word, bartering with less than, no, 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 this product, that's like me trying to sell you um, or me selling my MacBook to you and telling you that, hey, this is worth $10 million mm -hmm. or $2. And $2, you're going to take it, disregard it. I got a $2 MacBook. Yeah. Like, you you know, like you're not going to, Either you you're not gonna value it. I I think I, I think when you know something's value, like you treat it as such. Yep. Like look how you treat your clothes. Like and look how people like how in a, a cultural society how people treat Jordans or a car or oh BMW God. whatever it yeah. is. Like you you take care of it. You're gonna wash it. You're gonna cleanse it. You're gonna make sure that it is not just sitting in mud like constantly. So that's me too. That, that, that same thing goes for me because I know my value. I know what I bring to the table and I know what I reciprocate. I know the type of person that I am now because there was a time I didn't know. I was always kind. I was always like loving, but I needed to be loved. Like I need, I need you to love me so I can love you back. And I'm a great lover back, but I need you. Like, and it's like, no, that's real needy. Like now, I, I love me, and that's good enough. Like yeah. I'm, not, <laughs> like, and I, you know, somebody's gonna come across and be like, "Dang, she really loves herself." Yeah. Like, and I, I really believe that. So, that helps. I don't know. I think everything's on purpose. I think everything's timing. I think all, all that's supposed to happen in love and life and relationships, it'll happen as it needs to happen, um, or it'll reveal to you in a timely manner, what you need to get out of it, whether it's no more or yes, I want to be, I want to be in this. So. Okay. Yeah. You know, that you just, you just definitely dropped some gems. You actually just made me think about a couple of things. Um, and to add a little bit to what you just said, guys and girls, ladies and gentlemen, when you do know your worth and you exude that and you exude that self value, the BS will avoid you automatically. They're going to look at you and see that and be like, damn, I'm not even going to step to it because I ain't ready. That's happened to me. Like when my stuff wasn't together and they'd be like, this woman, I'm like, mm. and I probably could have got it. Not like that, but could have, you know, been with her right. or whatever. But because I knew where she was and what she was doing and how she valued herself, I'm like, yo, I'd be on thin ice from the gate because I know my stuff ain't together. And that motivated me. I was like, well, Rob, you don't want to miss out on opportunities like that because that is the right. type of woman you want. You the fourth, right. Yeah. So yeah. you <laughs> the, like, like you, when you see that you're lacking in any area, you, if you are out of paper towels at home, you go restock. <laughs> like, and, yeah. and so if you realize I'm not where I'm supposed to be, um, and, and, then you you fill up on that like and you restock that and replenish that and you do that the only way you can do that is like really um peeling back the layers of of yourself and i i posted something earlier this week jada pinkett smith she had posted about um self mastering and the power of like when you you want to choose somebody that has learned how to master themselves mm -hmm. because i'm in a process of of self mastering exposure is about self mastering it's about learning the things that i like and seeing the world like and and, and like tapping into like the hidden parts of myself um and then in turn as i tap into them i want to share them with other people so that they are inspired to tap into their own hidden um, compartments of themselves so you have to you have to be willing to seek out and discover yourself because there's so many blind spots that we have um, with self. And if, you, if you're not paying attention to it, it you, may, you may miss out on some major opportunities, some major things, some major people, like having people in your life that, that you truly could be deserving of, but you just haven't done the work. And so... That's personal. True. That's your relationship tip. Tip. I know. I feel like a young little von Zant. Oh. You know. <laughs> All right. Here's what we're gonna do. Here's what we're gonna do. Yeah, we have a lot. We. Ha I, I actually have a lot more, but this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do a part two with you. 
we can do it right after this or we can do it at another time. I'm going to do a part two with you because I want to talk about your travel. I want to talk about your food. And I, I called it my closet. I got all these little labels for you. I said my closet because you got your little fashion picks and then you do your lashes and you do candles. So that's okay. kind of what I consider that. But I know I know my listeners. Some of y'all got short attention spans and I want y'all to get these gems. So this is going to be part. This is part one. Thank y'all for listening. Y'all know where to find us from my experience podcast on Facebook, FME underscore podcast on Instagram. You can listen to us on SoundCloud, iTunes, Google Play, anywhere that they have podcasts. Spotify. What? Yeah, we on Spotify. Um, all those places you can listen to us. Mm -hmm. um, Jessica, where can they find you? You can find me at Lash and Soul. That's my studio or at Exposure, E-X-P-O-Z-H-E-R. Um, and the links to my blog and my website, all of that information is on um i'm on instagram facebook yep well thank you so much for answering my random ass facebook message and participating <laughs> in this i truly appreciate it as always that's my nerve-wracking part i'm like Ugh. like i'm like <laughs> this person is gonna know i've been stalking them online and i want to interview them now so <laughs> but <laughs> no, thank you i'm honored i'm humbled i think that this is amazing um I, like I, I just never would have pictured that. So I, this is like something that goes on my first podcast, like on my list of life accomplishments. So thank you. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> um. Oh, I almost forgot. So those of you listening, we are doing this is the last episode for. Wait, is this the last episode? This is. All right. So this is the last episode for our giveaway. We're actually doing a giveaway this month. We're giving away a thirty dollar Amazon gift card. And y'all know that there's a keyword that you have to have from every episode. And the keyword for this episode is sage. So <laughs> in light of what we've talked about, the keyword is sage. So remember that. Remember those competition rules. They're posted in the Facebook group. If y'all have a question, comment, and or y'all want to be a guest from my experience podcast at gmail.com, hit us up. We will catch y'all next time. Peace. Thank you all again for joining us. Once again, you can find her wonderful eyelash line at www.lashandsoulstudio.com. You can also find the candles on there. And if you want to check out Jessica's blog, www.exposer.me. Very interesting stuff. Very cool stuff. I'm going to have her back on so we can talk more about it. Thanks again for listening. Peace.